In the first part of this series, we seen the 1940 Fort St. Anne being rescued from a garden where it had lay derelict for 50 years. Once back in their garages, the tractor was stripped to see what parts could be salvaged. In this video, we will show the assembly and restoration of the Fort St. Anne. And at the end of the video, we will see the finished tractor pull a binder cutting a field of oats. The key bed there. The gear wheel is being held firmly while the adjusting lock nut is tightened to the recommended settings. <clears throat> that bearing there just as the bearing that carries the, the back half of the, the gearbox there, the bottom shaft. Here the gears are being assembled. The bottom shaft is being fitted in the gearbox. Paddy is inserting the brake shaft. The top shaft is fitted to the front gearbox housing. These are the brake plates. Having been cleaned and inspected for cracks, they are now being fitted. All gear wheels have to be correctly aligned to allow the final assembly. The final assembly of the gearbox has been completed and bolted into place. Paddy is cleaning the half shaft housing in preparation for cutting the gasket. Although these gaskets can be purchased, it is more cost effective if you make them yourself. The waste on the inside can be used to make a smaller gasket. Paddy McKenna made all the gaskets for the tractor. The half shaft housing has now been placed in position and the bolts tightened. The whole back end assembly is now being put in place. This was a heavy lift of approximately 160 pounds. Another piece of the jigsaw is refitting the worm. The outer bearing case is tapped into place. final bit is the drawbar case. The engine has been connected to the transmission and the bolts around the bell housing are being tightened. The steering box and part of the clutch assembly are being refitted. This is the housing where the pulley is fastened to the transmission. The nut at the bottom of the picture can be adjusted to increase brake efficiency. Paddy is making sure that everything is lined up so as not to damage the gasket. The pulley is being fitted to the tractor. The clearance between the valve stem and the push rod may be checked with a set of feeler gauges. The valve must be set to the correct clearance between 16 and 20 thousandths of an inch. The valve springs are now being fitted. This is a valve spring compressor. This is so that the valve spring seat and retainers can be fitted into the valve stem. The valves have already been ground. With the aid of a screwdriver, Eamon checks the valve spring. Everything is in order. Paddy is oiling the big end bearing, the piston and rings. The piston rings are now being compressed to enable the piston to slide into the cylinder bore. The connecting rod has been fitted onto the crankshaft. Using a torque wrench, the nuts are torqued and keyed. Mm. 
The sump is being refitted. The valve cover is being refitted. Eamon is replacing the cylinder head. He had no problem getting a new cylinder head gasket. The torque wrench has to be used again to tighten on the head. The head has to be torqued in a sequence to prevent distortion. Paddy is now fitting the manifold gaskets and the manifold has been tightened up. The radiator has been partly assembled with replacement sides and will be tested for water leaks. We just put these side bits on her here now. So the head to put on her and test her. So we're not worrying much about gaskets here at the minute. We just want to test the cores. The water pump and pulley are now being put back on. The Fordson is now being shot blasted by Dominic Hughes in preparation for the first coat of primer. Shot blasting is a hazardous operation and the operator has to have a constant supply of clean filtered air into his protective headgear as well as wearing a protective suit. The Fordson, now back at Mahara, has been given her first coat of primer. This is a zinc rust inhibiting red oxide. This is the air cleaner. The numbers you see tell the day and month that this part was cast. One part of the tractor almost completely rotted away was the steering wheel. The cost of a new one was £150 plus VAT plus carriage, so Raymond decided to make one. The centre part was still in fair condition and could be used again. Raymond had cut the outline of the old one out of cardboard and used this as his template. This is the rim which was bought new quite cheaply. Made out of 3 mil steel, you can now see the final product, a brand new steering wheel. Raymond McNamee made many other replacement parts, including the governor control rod, better known as the throttle. He also made the choke control, manifold studs and governor linkage. The throttle linkage is now being connected and adjusted. The choke control. We were just discussing the price of these tractors with a, with a cost new. And it says here in the book, the land utility model was available with a choice of Dunlop, Firestone or Goodyear tyres, each with the manufacturer's own distinctive design of centre. This example sports a Dunlop, it's obviously referring to this tractor here in the picture. This example sports uh, Dunlop tyre centres. Now it says here the basic land utility was £195, and that's what that would have cost new. This tractor here, I suppose, is referring to in the pictures of 1938, as, as this one here is 1940, but there wouldn't be much in it. Uh, £195 is a saying new. Now, if you wanted bra extra brakes, that would be. Uh, handbrake, some of these tractors would have come with a handbrake on them. Well, them extra brakes would have cost you eight pounds. And there were common features on uh, tractors between 1936 and 1939. There was also a lighting set available for them and that would have cost an extra tenner. So that would be running that tractor into about 213 pounds with everything on it. And today it wouldn't hardly do a mile up for it. But you can see there, this is the original Fortune Spanner that with these tractors. A lot of them, the nut heads are all the same size, they're two sizes and you'll find out that, that this suits a lot of stuff. The men are fitting the original radiator. They hope there will be no leaks. The fuel tank, which needed slight repairs, is also fitted. The next stage in the rebuilding program is the mudguards. The brackets have been placed in the correct position and marked. Although these mudguards are new, most of the brackets were salvaged from the original tractor. Paddy is drilling the holes to allow the brackets to be riveted to the mudguard. This is deburring the drilled holes. This means removing the rough edges caused by the drilling. 
The rivets are being cut to the required length. The rivets are being heated. Raymond is using a hammer drill adapted for riveting. This is a very time consuming task as each mudguard contains approximately 86 rivets of different sizes. That's just your foot plate there and this is a strengthener. Crop along the edge so when you stood on it, and this is for this side and the back of here, when you stood on it, you know, it supported and kept it from bending down. Just a little ragged end rivet that came up here, folded over, riveted on here. Eamon is filling the radiator in preparation for starting the tractor. This radiator holds 10 and a half gallons of water, approximately 47 litres. You should go, you're going to go to the roller. Alright, It's hard to believe that after 50 years, the tractor started on the second swing. The right hand side mudguard is being fitted. The rear wheel being fitted is very heavy, at least 300 weight. Eamon has fitted new rear tyres at a cost of £450. Before the Fordson gets any more paint, she will have to be tested for oil or water leaks. The men took this opportunity to reseed a field. The tractor is now getting its first coat of primer undercoat. The man doing the spraying is Liam Donnelly, himself a vintage enthusiast and the owner of two Fords and Ends, a 1939 and a 1941. The undercoat has now been applied and Liam would like to leave the tractor for at least 48 hours so as to allow the paintwork to harden, also to ensure that there are no imperfections and that the paint has bonded with the red oxide primer. The men are lightly sanding the paintwork to remove any roughness. Liam will expect to use six litres of mid-coach green paint and the tractor will get two coats. The tin work and radiator head are covered with masking paper to prevent overspray settling. Everything that had to be removed for painting is now being refitted. This is the original number of this Fordson. The tractor belonged to Ernest Clockery from outside Dungannon. His son-in-law Norman Green had the number plate hanging in his shed. The new plate was painted by Bertie McConnell from Garva. Bertie also painted Eamon's name on the toolbox. Care had to be taken when fitting the fuel tank so as not to scratch the paintwork.
This is the bearing on the front axle. Raymond is filling the centre with grease. Eamon's uncle Mickey had a field of oats ready for harvesting and Eamon and Paddy were proud to get the chance to show off the new forge. This binder was used in our first vintage farming video, Farming Down the Years, back in 1990. If you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to our channel for more videos of Irish farming life.